Streets of New Capenna is finally here. Assuming we don't get a network error. <laughs> what is going on everybody and welcome to the very first standard video for Streets of New Capenna here on the It Resolves channel. Couple things I want to mention before we talk about this deck. Uh, first and foremost, we did not get a video up yesterday. That is the first time this year that I believe we didn't get a video up. Unfortunately, the plan was to actually jump right into Streets of New Capenna as soon as it was available, and it wasn't available until very late. Uh, and unfortunately, I didn't have time to record a video. So I do apologize for that. I'm really trying hard not to miss days of content, uh, and we've done a really great job so far this year, and so I want to keep that up. Uh, unfortunately, that was out of my control. I could have recorded something else, but I figured what's the point when there's a new set dropping. So uh, that was kind of my, my goal and it just didn't happen. So I do apologize, but we are here today and we're looking at Riveteer's Treasure, which is a deck of my own creation that we're going to talk about a lot more on our new podcast with our good friend and fellow content creator country fried uh if you haven't watched episode one or uh listened to episode one you can do that either on our youtube channel here on youtube or you actually can listen in the spotify app or podcast app as well so i do encourage you check that out it is called the glorious sunrise podcast it is an absolute blast to record that and in the next episode we're releasing every monday we're actually going to be discussing this deck in very very good detail along with a deck that Country Fried put together uh, as our top picks for the new format. So I just want to encourage you to go check that out, have some fun with it. But let's talk about this deck. Uh, I don't want to go into too much detail. I want to save some of that for the podcast episode. But the idea of this deck is to really utilize treasure and then in the later turns of the game, give us a couple of extra plays that we can utilize uh, with all of that treasure that we hopefully get throughout the game. So you can, you can tell we've got a lot of new cards in this one. Uh, Gala Greeters being a really big one. You can repeatedly create tapped treasure tokens. Uh, we do have the Professional Face Breaker, which allows us to sacrifice a treasure to exile the top card of our deck that we can then play that turn. Gives us a couple extra plays. Uh, Riveteer's Charm, a really nice catch-all kind of card in my opinion. I really do like the charms. I think this is probably the best of them. Uh, at least just off the face of, of the, the format. I don't know what it's really going to look like long term. Um, but this gives us a little bit of removal, a way to draw extra cards, essentially, and then a way to deal with graveyards if we happen to need to. Uh, Obnixilis, the, the big daddy himself is here. Uh, you'll notice also we've got a lot of two ofs in the deck. That's because we're trying stuff out. So if you happen to use this deck, uh, feel free to kind of retool it the way you would like to. But uh, Obnixilis, along with a Seeker's Chariot, gives us a way to repeatedly copy the Obnixilis token if we casualty it out. Uh, and there are ways with things like Gala Greeters late game to be able to ultimate Obnixilis right away. So we'll see if that actually works, but it's a really sick little combo. Uh, Zeatora's Envoy gives us extra cards as well. Urubrask uh, gives us an extra card every single turn and also lets us know what the opponent's up to and kind of decentiv or, or I should say incentivizes them to play every single card they draw. And then at the very top, we've got Zeatora, the incinerator to kind of help us finish the game and create extra treasure tokens if we so choose. So we have got a lot in this deck. The synergies are rampant. We'll talk more about it as we go through. And again, on that podcast episode, I don't want to waste any more time though, guys. Let's jump right in. All right, guys, this is our first ever game with Streets of New Capenna. Let's see how it goes. Uh, this is an interesting one, but I think I'll try it. Um, we really take off at three into four into five. We'll see if that actually pans out or not, but it would be sick if it could. Um, one thing about this deck is the curve is very, very like standard. You see a very easy little curve out with this deck, and I really like that. Um, but it is certainly sometimes a little tricky uh, because Excuse me. Um, in testing this, what I've found is you do get a lot of really strong three drops, but until you get to that three drop mark, it can be a little tricky. See, like this would have been a great turn to play, but here we are. Um, all right, so we have a couple of options, but I think um, what I would like to do is at least try and get the professional face breaker. My assumption is we're up against a Jwari disruption here though. Uh, so I do kind of expect this to get countered. Um, and this, again, guys, I've bot matched with this, but I have not actually played on the ladder. I haven't had the opportunity to, so this is a brand new experience. Wow, it actually landed. I am very surprised. Uh, fully expect them to kill this, like, now. Um, 
But you know what? That's okay. Wow, they didn't. What? What are we doing? Um, interesting. That's very confusing. Uh, okay. Let's go ahead and get double green out. We've already got double red. Interesting. I'm very confused by that. Okay, let's, uh, first things first, I'm gonna try and attack in here. We'll see what happens. Um, are we gonna do it? We are gonna do it. Interesting. Okay. Uh, so this does start that treasure token rolling, which is great. Um, now we've got a couple of options. We could Prosperous Innkeeper into Fable, uh, which might be the safest bet. Uh, we could also just a Seekus Chariot, but I think I kind of want to wait until we have the Innkeeper down for that. Yeah, let's, uh, let's try for the Prosperous Innkeeper. This may not land. Okay, it does. Um, sick. <laughs> Uh, so now we can Asika's Chariot, but <clears throat> I am going to play on the, the side of safety a little bit here because we know they have Dwari Disruptions. I would like to, to make sure these things stick. Now, they didn't counter first time around, so I doubt they will this time unless they have just like a Solid coming, uh, which isn't, I mean, that that's pretty reasonable to assume. Uh, one thing you'll notice with this deck in particular, and again, we talk a lot about this on the podcast, guys, so please do uh, stay tuned for that on Monday. We won't have tested the decks by that time, unfortunately. Um, the, like, the recording we had already done, so unfortunately we didn't get a chance to record prior to, but um, we really did have a great opportunity to kind of talk through every little detail of the deck, and uh, one of the things that came up is that the card value of basically everything in this deck is relatively high. Um, you'll notice we've got just like very powerful plays on their own. Professional face, face breaker, very good card. Fable of the mirror of, of uh, the mirror breakers, very very good. Asika's chariot, Urabrask, uh, Zeotora. I mean, all of these cards do a lot on their own. Uh, and what that means for us is that in a situation where we're either top decking or we are fighting through a bunch of stuff, we've got a lot of great options. Um, now, they're not perfect, I get it, but it is very, very important that we've got those. Now, the question becomes, do we discard anything here? Um, the Voltage Surge actually seems relevant, uh, funny enough, because I'm assuming this is a gold span deck, uh, and I don't just want to lose to a, a good old-fashioned gold span. Um, now, the other way we can fight through that is just by playing Zero Tora, um, but I don't know how much I love that. Um, it might be the Voltage sur Surge. Wow, I can't speak. Um, weirdly, I also think it's Zero Tora. I'm going to discard those two and draw two. All right. So the reason I'm doing that is so I can dig myself into more lands, but also so I can get just threats that are reasonable to play here. So, um, let's first things first. I think I am just going to attack in uh we'll see what happens uh thankfully again if we don't draw lands it's not that big of a deal because we've got extra treasure tokens so it's really not that difficult for us to get uh mana here and i think i kind of want to go the at sushi play what we're facing down next turn is a burn down the house or some style of sweeper i'd like to have something here that one is a big pressure point for them but also um kind of encourages you know, uh, a kill spell here. And then we can get uh, Goldspan Dragon down and really start beating down. They don't have anything. I guess they don't. Okay. Uh, interesting. This is a fascinating game. All right. So we get the token. Good. Um, or the, the flip side here, excuse me. So, I mean... I just attack with everything. I don't think there's a big reason not to. They certainly could have a flash creature, but I'm not that worried about it. Um, and I think what I'm going to end up doing, I could have played the gold span dragon. I don't actually think that's the play though. I think it's the uh, chariot. Uh, yeah, let's give it a shot. Again, we, we've got so much mana now. All right. I'm still a little confused by the opponent's deck. I'm not 100% sure what they're doing. Um, what we're doing, though, is setting up a world where they sweep, we play 
at sushi if we need to and then activate the asika's chariot truthfully though we've just got some hasty things that we can get down and start dealing some damage to but it looks like we won guys we did it our first ever game we won it i love it let's jump into a uh, game two what's up guys before we jump into the next game i just want to remind you if you would like to pick up this month's patreon rewards feel free to do so at patreon.com slash it resolves all right guys here we are for game number two uh and yeah i mean we definitely keep this we've got the prosperous innkeeper to throw out that treasure token if we draw another land we can actually get a turn three at sushi down uh, which again sets us up very very well but worst case scenario we've either got face breaker or fable um on turn three so this seems like an easy keep uh i'm gonna lead with the rock fall veil this guarantees the uh prosperous innkeeper turn two what we don't get to do is leave up voltage voltage surge but um i think that's okay now the question becomes <laughs> do we go for the voltage surge now or i think what we'll do is pass and then when they go to target something we uh kill it i think that's probably the best play all right there's the duress let's go ahead and kill now um submitting zero so they can get what the chariots and the fable um both of which are like really good in our deck, but again, the value of every card in our deck is pretty high, so duresses are gonna be at their best against us. Um, interesting. So we do have the Proving Ground here, uh, which is not bad, but it certainly is a little unfortunate that it's an, uh, a tapped land this turn. Um, but that does guarantee us a turn four play on turn four, which is pretty good. <laughs> interesting um is it Zeatora? uh it might be and i think we're past face breaker range although it does so much for us um yeah i'm gonna get rid of the face breaker i'm not positive that that's the right call um but i'm basically keeping just some really powerful stuff uh the question is do we go for the asika's chariot i think we do i think it's a bit more of a safe play knowing that um they're probably gonna run some sweepers and things like that so while this is probably a little less exciting than at sushi uh it does set us up well against basically whatever they've got um and then if we do get to play another card like a creature off the top if they happen to sweep or whatever we've got a safer bet wow they are just like going for the hand man all right well this is kind of what the deck is built for is the fact that we just have really good stuff so <laughs> it's kind of okay i'm gonna go ahead and play the gallag readers just because uh we'll do this uh we'll do this and we'll do this so this copies we get to create a trap treasure token and gain a life uh, and we definitely go for the treasure tokens because we need as much of that as we can to play off the top of our deck. So, here we are. Um, hopefully they don't have too much they can do. I mean, we're... Our damage race is definitely going our way, so I'm not terribly worried about that. That's interesting. Um, I mean... <laughs> just do this, I suppose. Um, yep. We attack in, uh, we create a copy, and there we go. We did it. That's our second win, guys. We did it. That was amazing. Great, great game. Like We got time for one more, guys. Let's go into it. We did a rank up thing. Look at us go. All right, game three. Let's do it. All right, guys, here we are for game number three. Now, this, unfortunately, if either one of these was a green land, I would super be into this. But uh, unfortunately, the, the Singleton Swamp is not ideal. I think we're going to have to mulligan this one and probably just keep this one. A um, little, little less exciting, I think, but it is a decent, uh, decent hand here. Got some interesting stuff. So again, you can copy a lot with... Oh, that's very good. Okay, sick. Gallag Readers is one of the best two drops, I think, out of the new set. It just does so much. It's kind of ridiculous. So, uh, very happy to see that here. We'll just go ahead and run that out. 
And this just sets us up so well for future turns because now we can start ramping into the big stuff like that Goldspan Dragon. Assuming they don't just kill this. Uh, looks like they're running the Azorius uh, Stowaway deck. So this deck is looking to draw a bunch of stuff. Uh, they have got so many new little like protection spells uh, like Boon of Safety or whatever it is that put the shield counter in scries and all kinds of fun stuff in the new set. Uh, though they're also playing Celestis. I'm a little confused. Uh, that's fine. Um, all right, I'm going to go this route. So we're going to Professional Face Breaker. That's going to give us a treasure token. And then we are going to attack in. Um, which gives us another treasure token. So now we're well set up for next turn. Again, the treasure is just super rampant in this deck. It's very sick. Uh, okay. Sure. Becomes blocked, you can return it to its owner's hand. I honestly have not seen this card in a long time. Um, it's very good, obviously. They get to draw a lot. Uh, nice. All right, cool. So we've got two mana available. That could be... Oh, they're going to foretell. Interesting. We could blow up the Celestis. That is an option for us, but I don't think we actually need to. I think we just... Uh, we just do the big stuff. Um, we will... Um, you know, weirdly, I think we just go for the... This. <laughs> Um, we can actually go ahead and blow up this if we'd like, but, uh, I think what we do is just attack with these two. Seems pretty straightforward. Um, get it to create a treasure token. Do we want to get this going? Part of me really wants to. Um, hmm. so we can actually do like a lot of stuff here. Uh, let's do this. Hold on. Let's fable. We're going to go for the big plays. We're not going to worry about the Celestis this turn, I don't think. So this is going to drop this. Uh, we are going to gain two life, I believe. We're going to do this. We're going to casualty it out. Um, by sacrificing the 2-2. So basically what we're going to start doing is really attacking their hand. <laughs> um, just to make it as difficult as possible for them to really do anything. This is why Obnixilis is so stupid. Is Copying Obnixilis is ridiculous. It's basically a... a ridi oh, they're just going to take the damage. Wow. Big brain play. All right, cool. Um, that's fine by me. <laughs> Um, they can kill one of them, but they can't kill both of them, uh, as it stands. Now, that might change, I'm sure, but... Hey, they are gonna attack over here. Um, I'm gonna do this. So they can return it, uh, becomes blocked. They can return it to the owner's hand. I'm not gonna... I'm gonna protect Obnixilis here, because my assumption is this is probably, like, a Doomscar. Um, and I kinda just wanna get rid of any opportunity they have of getting rid of stuff here. Interesting. Okay. Dissipate, huh? What is this? <laughs> what a card. Inspiring Overseer, huh? Alright, this is not the deck I thought it was. This is a weirdo deck. Uh, not that the person is weird. I'm saying the deck is very strange. Very interesting uh, and potentially very good, but I'm not sold on it. That's quite good. Um, I think we actually do get rid of the Siju. All right, well, we just get a land anyway. Um, all right, so we have a couple of options here. Um, let's see, how do we want to do this? So we can just attack in with this. Uh, alternatively, that has a menace, which is really important. Um, They have no mana available, so let's do this. We're gonna we're gonna be a little tricksy about this. Um, 
We're gonna attack with these two. Uh, and we will... I think go ahead and blow this up. All right. We'll submit zero. Um, not sold on this being the right play, but I'm being a little overly aggressive because we've got some life total to play with and they have no open mana, so <laughs> not really that worried about it. Um, sure, that's fine. So we trade, that's great. Um, and we get a treasure token out of the deal. So now, I think we just plus, just keep this damage going. They're going to discard. We're going to plus again. We're basically just annihilating their hand here if we can. They can take two if they want, but looks like they're choosing not to. Got rid of a Raiden or Raiden. I don't know. This thing. This thing's very good. All right. Sick. So now we're in a position again where even if they sweep, we win. Yeah. All right. We did it. Heck yes, undefeated run, everybody. Let's talk about this. All right, guys, that was our first experience with Streets of New Capenna with our very own deck list, and holy crap did it show off. Uh, that was amazing. Undefeated run with Riveteer's Treasure. Absolutely insane. The card value in this set, in my opinion, is extraordinarily high. We're gonna see a lot of like three color decks obviously taking over the meta. I think it'll be a lot easier to play those because we do have the triumphs. We've got the, the flexibility in the land slot to be able to support that. And with that, you get a lot more combinations, a lot more powerful plays. Uh, and this really showed that off. I mean, this is an insane deck in my opinion. Uh, again, this is a starting point. This is not meant to be the final list. I want you guys to take it, try it out for yourself and see how you can uh, tool it out to maybe be better for the meta once things settle. Uh, again, keeping in mind there's a lot of flex slots in here. There could be more Obnixiluses as an example if we feel that's the best card for it. Uh, alternatively, we could take out Obnixilus if we don't need it. So there's a lot of opportunity here to kind of play around and see where it lands, but I really think there's something special with this deck. It obviously is good enough on the ladder. <laughs> at least for best of one. Uh, and so I'm very, very happy with it. Again, I'm not the best deck builder in the world, but it's really exciting when you go undefeated with a deck of your very own. So this is a special thing for me. I cannot wait to jump more into the set. We are gonna try and get some gameplay videos up every day this weekend. I'll do the best I can maybe even double up we'll see we'll see how time works out but i'm gonna do the best i can guys thank you so much for being patient through the network errors uh yesterday i i'm a little peeved about that but here we are uh and guys i hope you have a great time with this new set thank you so much for watching i love you all very very much have a great day